Hey guys, this is Max and today I want to talk about Latvia's most renowned photographer, which is Inter Ruka. And in my opinion, she's a great inspiration for any portrait photographer, particularly those who are working with a 6x6 medium format camera, because Inter Ruka worked with the Rolleiflex basically from a tripod, and she had some really great ideas about uh, composition and how to draw the viewer in and reveal some of the character of her protagonists. Interruka was born in 1958 in Riga and she has a documentary anthropological approach to photography very similar to for example the German portrait photographer August Sander who also heavily inspired her or American photographers like Walker Evans and Dorothy Lange. I don't want to go into too much detail about her life. I can only highly recommend two great documentary films that are out there. One of them is available online. I would put the link where you can purchase the film uh, in the description below. Mm. But what is interesting for us here, for our context, is that Interruku is not a completely professional photographer. She worked at the Swedish embassy in Riga as a house cleaner for most of her life to support her life and the, the life of her son. And several grants and awards and scholarships that she received over time made it possible for her to really invest in her photography and become one of Europe, Europe's great uh, photographers with lots of exhibitions and books like this one. And today I want to show you uh, some of her work uh, that is published in this particular monograph that brings her combined work in a single book, um, focusing on three particular large projects. The first one is called um, My Country People. Um, where she basically takes portraits um, in the 1980s of rural people in Latvia and their life. And then there's another great project called, called People I Happened to Meet, where she approaches strangers, approaches strangers on the streets, asking them to take their photograph and talking them into it, basically. And Amalia Street 5A, which is not so much a portrait of only the residents of that particular street, but also of the house itself and how it evolves over time. So a really interesting project as well. What is interesting about uh, Interruka is that she creates very personal portraits that draw the viewer in. And she's doing that in part by showing a very individual environment, revealing as much character as possible of her protagonists. And in addition to that, she adds little handwritten description text, provides the names of her protagonists, and even some of their quotes. So basically the things that, that she remembered, what they said to her while she took the photograph. Um, most of the time, the portraits are very serious. So we have serious people in a plain and often humble surrounding uh, and especially in the first project the people really bear the marks of a hard day-to-day -day life. So it's really really interesting um, and what's also interesting from the technical side is that she is using a Rolleiflex um, camera that she bought from a Russian photographer back in 1984 I believe and used it ever since or really for a really really long time so most of her projects are shot with that particular camera she's using a tripod and as you can learn and only using black and white film by the way and as you can learn from the documentary film she's not really fond of developing film but likes everything else about the process of film so the printing and of course uh, taking the picture itself working with film but she's not really fond of developing so um, let's move over to the desk and take a look at this beautiful monograph by Interruka. So now let's take a look at Interruka's People I Know, the monograph that I just mentioned in the introduction. And when we open up the book, um, what we see in the bilingual introduction is something really interesting. Um, and it says it here right away. The images that we get are not romanticized depictions, but precise representations of the subject who is given room for a self-confident demeanor. 
And a great example for that is this very first image of a young girl in 1986. What I like about this is, again, is the composition and the little things, the, the flowers and everything that she has here on, on her hair. The dark background on the left and on the right we see probably her father, her parents in the background. And you get a kind of shy, um, bittersweet look into the camera. Another image I really like is this one here again from 1986 and from the very first series. Here she manages to have a completely black background on the left and really nice details and some light on the, in the foreground on the right. Again the composition here is interesting because it's uh, quite some headspace and we find our subject on the it feels like the a little bit lower left corner, so it's not really in the center or anything, or not really a rule of thirds um, on the side, a little bit rule of thirds. Um, and that adds to the feeling of this is a young person, it's not kind of on eye level um, in this case, but this must be a younger person. And also the kind of critical look on his face is interesting in my opinion. Another image I really like is this one, and it also gives you an idea of the kind of notes that uh, she puts next to it. Um, in this case, uh, it says, When I met Kuzma, he could no longer see. He knew he could never see the photos. But he said to me, Daughter, if you need me, just tell me where and I will sit there. Um, and then he, she adds, Kuzma has brothers. Uh, during the war, they fought on opposite sides. So. Uh, a little piece of information that says so much about this particular person. And here what's interesting is of course the composition while his eyes, his blind eye, is in the very center of the image, it really doesn't feel like it. The way the, the desk moves towards that direction and his body leans um, like towards the desk is really interesting, in my opinion, as a composition. And again, what is usual for her work, you get some idea of the environment, the surroundings in which this person lives, and you get a better feeling of how the life must be for that particular person. Another example for an interesting composition is this image here on the right. We have, what's kind of jarring about this image is that there is a second person. Um, you immediately look here and this is like a, a typical natural portrait. And except for maybe the hard light from the side and a little bit dark here on the left. But then you, your eye moves towards here and of course to this chair which is heavily illuminated. And you realize there's another person kind of hidden behind that chair and you don't really know why, why that is. It keeps you wandering, basically. Here's another portrait that's interesting for its composition. Uh, we have the focus on um, Clara, uh, is her name here, in the background. Or oh, it feels like the background because we have those cigarette butts, I assume, here in the foreground. And these three parts are basically the only thing that's uh, illuminated and they create this line that's running across the image and that kind of lead your eyes or help you lead your eyes. And you're wondering, of course, um, what do the cigarette butts or this foreground here has to do with that particular person? And it also feels a little bit unnatural because if this is a desk, it would be, she, she would be kind of low on the ground or you, you, you don't really know what it is and, and how it kind of gets together and why it's in the image. Um, so again, really nice way of, kind of creating a much more interesting portrait in this case. One more example from the first series. Um, 
This is Vladimir and the picture taken in 1987. And here it says on the notes, again handwritten notes on the left, Vladimir was a soldier in the war. He walked, he walked all the way to Königsberg on his feet. He received many awards and won medal at the burial of his oldest son, who died in an accident. Vladimir um, placed the medal inside the son's coffin. And again, we get this little glimpse into a person's life and the expression here, a more traditional composition, but again, what's interesting is how she's actually showing where the slide is coming from, that this must be a large window, even accepting that you will see this kind of, I don't know if it's part of a bench or something else, the separator and um, here a little bit uh, on the right side um, and a very sober expression on Vladimir's face here. So that's it. Um, these were some examples from the book. I hope you enjoyed this little tour. I, again, I can highly recommend this book. Take a look at it and thank you. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and this glimpse at the life and work of Interruca. Again, I can highly recommend the documentary films that are out there if you want to learn more. Uh, take a look at the book, um, get an idea of her compositions that might inspire you for your own photographs. If you like this video, please remember to like it. I would really appreciate it or even share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like that, um, subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome, and or leave me a comment in the comment section below to give me some feedback, to provide some feedback and give me a better idea of what I should focus on in the future. So thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you soon, bye.